Good morning, college football fans, or good afternoon, depending on where you're listening in the country. Welcome to the very last three and out college edition of this football year. As we are ready and set to talk about the one, the only, Senior Bowl. That's right, yo. This is me, a boy, lady. Join by my awesome host, Mr. Karen Rodriguez. And today, we will be talking, recapping, of course, the Shrine Bowl and the NFL PA Bowl. Giving you a little bit of insight from what we thought. And then, of course, giving you all the things you know and some cool stuff that we've been, you know, dug up for the Senior Bowl this year. So, get ready. The Senior Bowl is an hour and a half away. And this show will be leaked up to 30 minutes for the golf. It is going to be a fun one. I hope you're ready to rock and roll because we certainly are, y'all. One more time before we dive off into three and out permanently. And this show will rise again coming up in August. You are now tuned in live to three and out college mission right here on IE Sports Radio. Your directly for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 college football fans. Well, here we are, y'all. This is it. One more time for college edition. Oh my goodness, you guys. I can't even think of how, what a great season it's been. Darren and I said goodbye once already. Of course, that was for uh, the finale. And now we had a few off-season shows that directly followed it. And well, now it's about that time we say peace out. But one more time, one more goodie, if you shall, uh, if you should remember Chris Berman saying on NFL 2K5 when he got to week 17, if, for those of you who played that, one more gift under the tree, if you will, to open or something like that. And well, here that gift is one more time. Like I said, we will be diving off into the, uh, to, Three and out, the actual three and out, the NFL edition, if you will, uh, coming up. But before we do all that, we got to go ahead and finish it off strong with a strong Senior Bowl show. And well, that's what we're going to do here today. So, ladies and gentlemen, he, of course, is my co host here on Three and Out. He is the founder and host of both our volleyball show, Set Point, and our Southern California show. The SoCal Supreme Sports Show. He, of course, is one of the COOs of IE Sports Radio, the head of the PR department, and IE Sports Radio Hall of Fame class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my boy, my Mr. Taryn Rodriguez. What's going on, man? How are you doing today, brother? Hey, ladies and gentlemen, here with you today. Talking about college football. And let's rock and roll. Let's ride off one more time. Let's do it, brother. We have one more to get to. Darren, before we even talk about this, where has the season gone, man? Feels like it just started yesterday. It's flown by so quickly. It really has. Like I I mean, here we are. <laughs> here we are. Uh <clears throat> you know, with this crazy start, oh my gosh, we didn't know we were gonna have a season. <clears throat> Excuse me. We didn't know any of that. Then we got a season, and then there gets all these crazy things happen. Crazy opening week. Uh, before you know it, uh, Clemson's losing to people. We're like, what? Like, they're falling apart. Before you know it, um, we are uh, just completely just thrown off. You know, Bama lost a game to a and What the heck happened there? You know, <laughs> Michigan State and Michigan was a memorable one. I'm just saying, so many Great freaking, uh, so many great games, so many great moments this year. Of course, talked all about that in the last one well, we, for the season finale. But, Darren, time to put the lid on it, man. This is it. We had a senior bowl to be played coming up here in just under 90 minutes now, and we have a lot to talk about. So, first things first, let's go ahead and get on into the recaps here or the takeaways 
of the, uh, sorry, of the, where are we at? Shrine Bowl in the NFL PA Bowl. So, when going into the NFL PA Bowl, we had some really cool takeaways. Um, pretty good game itself. Uh, but I'll tell you, there were some standouts. Definitely some standouts. And it just seemed like this team would, sorry, it just seemed like some of these players, you know, could have been the Senior Bowl. I don't really know. I mean, we talked about last week, Darren. Some of these players get like, you know, they just kind of, I don't want to say get pushed aside, but the Senior Bowl is the mean one, but you get what I'm saying. So I'm taking a look here at a really cool article, Five Takeaways from NFL PA Collegiate Bowl by Jelani Scott on ESPN. Seems here that we had some, you know, a couple takeaways here. So it says here, Kelly steps up after stepping in. Uh, so crazy here. It says, after watching the National Squad's first two drives and via interception and a punt, not the best way to start your game, uh, you know, uh, Kelly stepped in to spark the offense on his way to earning game MVP honors. So really cool to see this young man stepping in and make that happen. He completed 9 of 13 passes for 68 yards during a 19-play drive that ate up 9 minutes and 4 seconds of the game and ended with a field goal heading into halftime. So uh, let's see here. He actually was quite the star. But can you imagine that, man? That's pretty awesome. This guy, uh, you know, was was a play so well. So what did you think of Kelly's performance? found tight ends, which was pretty impressive. Like, I think everyone forgets about the tight ends every now and then because sometimes the tight ends are blocking for the offensive line as well as the offensive linemen. And I think he utilized a bunch of his options. And I think, for me, that was my biggest takeaway because you not only have the wide receivers or the check down passes, but you also have those big boy tight ends, which can make grown man moves. And I think he was able to get hit the tight ends. And he also found his running back he got his running back involved from coastal carolina shermani jones so it was pretty solid and i liked how he was able to look comfortable most of the game and he was able to go for two as well so i think he looks comfortable and he found all his weapons so that's my takeaway well i'm right there with you darren what do you think darren where do you think he may go in this draft obviously we get it. He's probably not going to be a first rounder, maybe not even a second rounder. But honestly, Darren, where do you think he goes? I mean, wh- where, what round do you think he goes? And who do you think could really use him in the NFL right now? As a backup, <laughs> even. Well, um, well, that's actually a very good question. I mean, you have to look at the teams that are kind of in search of a quarterback. I mean, quite a bit of teams had quarterbacks retire, like the Bucks, the Steelers, Ike. I feel he might go fourth round, maybe a little later, but I don't know. I think it all depends on which teams are in need of a quarterback. It feels like it, you also have to look at free agency as well, but I think he can go fourth round at the most, maybe third round if he's lucky. So that's me. I am with you. I, I do agree. I think that's a great spot for him to be. Uh, more than anything, you're going to see uh, probably, you know, a lot of these guys in the later rounds, which you talked about already. But, but no, I completely agree with Darren. He can step up somewhere. I mean, it may, he may not be the starting first rounder or whatever, but Tom Brady was a six rounder, man. So, once again, we all, we, you know, we, we go back to that. So, uh, solid job from him. It says, Dixon Ezard match up nightmares in the making. Ooh, so <laughs> uh Dijon Dixon and Jaquez Edwards American team might have come up short on Saturday because they did lose by one point. Crazy game. But the receiver tandem made their big play potential known throughout the contest. Dixon, a three time first team all Southland selection at Nichols State. Uh, of course FCS school there. Finished with a game high 131 yards, Darren, and a touchdown catch on six receptions, including a 47 yarder that helped set up a field goal. His 11 yard touchdown grab in the second quarter served as the perfect snapshot of Dixon's steady hands and toughness. As for Ezard, uh, a dangerous combination of speed and balance. 
made the Sam Houston State, another FCS player, uh, wide out a tough cover on the uh, on both offense and special teams. With 41 receiving yards, a touchdown catch, and a 42 yard uh, and 42 yards to his name, it was no wonder Ezard was named first team all whack as a receiver and returner in 2021. How about these two guys, Darren? We got some hands coming out of the NFL PA Bowl. Yeah, I was actually quite impressed with those two receivers as well. I think Dejon Dixon was even was so impressive. I thought. I remember his big game when for Utah and or yeah, it was Utah. I think it was, and I think for me, Dixon just impressed me. I was just I just saw his great gameplay, and although his team came up short, I liked his big plays, and I think this kid has a bright future. And for him to step up as well as Ezard, I think it's quite promising, especially since the wide receiver core is probably the biggest thing for some of these big-time teams. So I think the wide receivers are going to have their eyes kept on in terms of certain teams that are in need of wide receivers. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I feel like right now our main focus for these guys are to make sure they're strong uh, with their performances, right, Taryn? I mean, you have to go into these games and make sure that, you know, you are insane. Because, once again, if you don't stand out, you're already in a game of standouts in, like, lower division, you know, in that deal. You're already in that game, trying to stand out with a bunch of guys who are really, really trying to stand out versus the guys who are really, really, really trying to stand out because they're already standouts in a very more standout-ish brand of college football. Wow, that was crazy. <laughs> but you totally get me, right, Terry? <laughs> oh, yeah, I get you. So, I get you, man. so we have a receiver from, uh, you know, you, you, uh, UCSD, Taryn, you know, one of the teams you cover here in Southern California. This young man has to go out in one of these smaller, uh, like, all-star games, and he has to really show, like, I am freaking amazing because if he doesn't and he's just okay he's kind of just okay in a game that's just okay and everyone's looking at the big ones already so it's like if you don't make a big like big big mark in one of these games and you weren't that you were you were okay and caught you might get surpassed you know big time so uh, I feel like these guys did exactly that. They made it, They well, sorry, they did the opposite. They really made a stand out here. Two receivers that could really make things happen. And receivers, man, um, they're not like quarterbacks. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of them on one team. And, and <clears throat> they can all make differences in different ways. In special teams. And, of course, you know, we see the spread like no other nowadays. And it's just ridiculous. But, you know, we see so many packages Andy Reid will find you, <laughs> right, Taryn? I mean, Tyreek Hill was a Division Two dude, man. This dude was Division Two. He played for West Alabama. <laughs> and Andy Reid, you know, I don't know, uh, what, I forgot when he got drafted, but I'm going to say, he's there. They will find your speed. So, anyway, so big ups to these guys. A couple more takeaways here, you guys. Uh says here, uh, let's see here. Uh, quarterback Plantoon nearly places American team to win. Uh, Cal Taron, here we go. This is, this is this is your guy once again, man. Cal quarterback Chase Garbers earned top billing coming into Saturday's game, but Alabama's A and M Akil Glass, we talked about him as well last week, uh, made sure scouts recognized his name and game by uh, by the end of the night. Garbers quickly made up for a lost fumble. By tied in Jake Tungs, his fellow Cal alum, on the game's opening series with a 14 play 75 yard drive to get the American squad on the board first. Uh, Glass would follow that with a 6 play 68 yard scoring drive of his own on the team's next possession. Both quarterback. Uh, both quarterbacks displayed solid pocket awareness and a nice touch, despite having to rotate in and out of the lineup. <laughs> Crazy, right? Uh, Glass, the two-time SWAC and HBCU Offense Player of the Year, finished 9-11 and 11 for 141 yards, while Garbers finished 10-13 of 13 for 119 yards, 
to go with two rushers. Oh, sorry, two rushes for 25 yards. So, all right, Aaron, a lot, a lot there to say. Um, this is the last thing we're going to touch on here for the PA uh, for the PA Bowl. But how about Garber, Aaron? Uh, quite impressive. I think his numbers were pretty solid. Obviously, he had a drive that resulted in a fumble, which is obviously not what he wanted. But I feel that he's kind of putting his name out there and. I don't think it helps that he was – I'm not trying to badmouth Cal for this, but I don't think Cal wasn't as big as some of the other Pac-12 schools just because everyone mainly focuses on, like, Oregon, USC, sometimes Utah, Arizona State, and whatnot. I feel that Garber's kind of got the shaft when it came to the quarterback pool in the Pac-12. So I think Garber's, with him being the headliner of the American team, along with Akil Glass, I think both of these two really put their names out there. And Garbers, I was quite impressed with. And I feel he's, I feel he could get drafted. And I'm willing to say this right now, he will get drafted. Yeah, I, I can totally see him going somewhere, Darren. I, I'm not going to, I'm not saying this because, oh, you know, he's down from our neck of the woods, way more, of course, yours than mine, but of course, our same area in Southern California. Honestly, Darren, the guy's got skill, and he can end up somewhere. I don't know where he's going to end up going, but seriously, he's going to sit behind somebody, and when it's his time, I think he might be, like, the kind of guy that just take the reins or to at least show how good he really is and then go somewhere else in ball. I mean, I don't know, man. Garbers is a special talent. I, I really do like this guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that Garbers has the potential, and he's able to make – I wouldn't say magic happen, but he's able to make big plays happen no matter what the situation. Like, he has made a big splash, and I think he even got playing time when he was, like, a freshman or sophomore. I think he just needs that chance to compete, and if someone is able to snatch him and he puts his head down and grinds, I think he could be amongst some of the top QBs. I am totally with you there, Darren. So, we'll switch gears. Like I said, unfortunately, we can't spend too much time, but we just want some standouts there. Switch on gears over to the, uh, for the next little 15 minutes or so, and then we'll get into the Senior Bowl. Uh, but for the Shrine Bowl, from Bill Smith, Senior Manager Research and Analysis at NFL.com, his article, 2022 NFL Draft, Seven Takeaways from the East-West Shrine Bowl, uh, he had some pretty good, some insight here. Of course, the West did win this thing, so yeah, West. <laughs> but when the when you're 25-24, sorry, that was a single point game. I forgot who won the the uh, the NFLPA. My bad. Oh my gosh, so many scores and so many things to look into and everything analysis. But Cone starts strong. Notre, uh, Notre Dame quarterback Jake Cone. I hope I'm pronouncing his name right. Went ten of thirteen for ninety one yards and a touchdown. A little more than a quarter of work. He led the West offense right down the field on the opening drive, going 5 for 6 for 49 uh, yards before the East was able to come up with a big goal line stand. The West scored on its next possession with Cone leading the way and a 56-yard drive that culminated in one yard or in a one-yard TD pass. Oregon State tight end uh, Tegan I don't know how to butcher. I really, really butchered his name. My apologies, dude. But how about this guy, man? We saw him. We saw him all year, Taryn. We it's not like we weren't watching him. What do you think about his his uh, performance in the East West Shrine game? Sorry about that. I was on mute. Um, I was very <laughs> impressed with the performance. I was quite impressed with how everything turned out for him, and I just couldn't. I don't really have the words to uh, say except. He was just, he just knew what he was doing and he made great decisions and he couldn't have been more timely with everything that happened, whether the ebbs and flows of the game. So I think he was just darn right impressive. I agree. Um, you know, Darren, people may see these numbers, right? Uh, you know, he went, what was it here? Uh, 10 for 13 for 91 yards and okay, blah, 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 blah. Five for six, 49 yards. Four. Okay, we get that. But Darren, we also got to take that, okay, these are just regular game. It's a regular game. Yes, we get it. But who he's playing, who they're playing is pretty major, right? And it's like, if you can do this on the stars, all a lot of these guys are going to the NFL, or some of them aren't least good enough to like, be in the conversation of somehow getting to the NFL. So if you can do this over this 
you know, these players, if you can do this, then I feel like no matter what, you know, if you can put up pretty good, what you would get in a regular old game, you know, regular old game versus whoever in your conference or Notre Dame, they don't have one, we know that. But anyway, I just really feel like you can do that same thing, but this time versus a bunch of guys that make up an all-star team, like, this, it's actually pretty good. So that's my thought of just seeing, like, numbers that are like, blah, like, you know, I, I really feel like if you can put up these kind of numbers on teams, I mean, you, you know, you definitely uh, need to be looked at by a lot of NFL teams. Yeah, and I think that the West really showed their stuff, like, despite almost collapsing that 25-8 lead. Yeah. So I think that, for me, my takeaway was that the Notre Dame quarterback, Jack Cohn, I think he did solid. And despite having a court, only playing a quarter, and I really hate this whole narrative of Notre Dame quarterbacks get a bad rep and they don't do well. And I hope, I hope Jack Cohn does actually excel in the NFL. I hope he's able to flourish and get drafted or get an opportunity. So for me, I think that my takeaway from this is that the West, despite nearly collapsing the game, was able to get the job done. And I think it showed in every aspect of the game. Agreed. Totally agreed. And this is what you see. This is what you want. You know, you want to see these players get out here and make things happen. So absolutely, yeah, the West did flop a little bit, like flew off. But <laughs> way to bring that up, Terry. Just kidding. No, but certainly great, great, great job, though, regardless of still pull it off. Um, also in this article, running backs make big impacts. So after a strong week of practices, North Carolina running back Ty Chandler, Taryn, we got to talk about this guy real fast, broke free for 20, uh, sorry, for runs of 21 and 16 yards on Thursday. Of course, this game was played a couple days ago on Thursday, two days ago. Uh, he ran 11 times in total for 69 yards and added an 8-yard reception, but did fumble in the third quarter. Fortunately, the West team recovered the loose ball, I think, <laughs> of course. Um, he showed good vision and ability to hit the hole quickly and get upfield. Chandler wasn't the only one who had success on the ground as Florida State's Deshaun Corbin, of course, we'll talk about him in a few moments, uh, added eight rushes for 50 yards with the touchdown. The West's ability to run the ball was the story of the game as it outgained the East on the ground 151 to 63. How about that, Taryn? How about these guys here? Uh, these these players. The East did a big uh, did get a big uh, contribution from a back, but it came via passing game. South Dakota State's Pierre Strong Jr. Of course, we'll talk about him. Made a 65 yards. Actually, no, we haven't yet. Uh, so 65 yard uh, catch. To get the East on the board in the third quarter, Strong impressed all week in practice as both a running back and receiver, but just one rush of four yards in the first half as the West controlled the ball. So how about these backs, Taryn? I really feel like Chandler's going to go somewhere, and actually he'll be like a second back, but I think he can like be a part of a tandem somewhere. I mean, what do you think about these guys, Taryn? You also got to remember that North Carolina produced Javante Williams, who made a big yes. splash for the Denver Broncos. Yes. So I'm not fully surprised seeing this happen. I'm not surprised that Ty Chandler had a big game. And I think for me, I totally agree. I think he can make a big impact with any NFL team. I think he might be the steal of the draft for any team that's in need of a running back. The question is, can that team utilize him correctly and how desperate are some of these teams for running backs? So for me, I think he can make a big splash. And I would not be surprised if he went first or second round. Maybe first round's a bit of a stretch, so probably say second or third round. I agree. Quick question here from the chat room. Marcus Lowe's great, Taryn. Our boy Marcus Lowe's great. Tune in. He says, does Cone have the intangibles that quarterbacks need to be successful in the NFL? That is a great question, isn't it, Taryn? <laughs> Absolutely it is. Um, Ian Book. I know I don't want to go off of somebody else, but he's the most previous quarterback, I believe, from Notre Dame. What do you think, Taryn? Do you feel you can compare him, or do you feel like, no, he's way better, just the same, or a little worse? Do you feel that this guy really does have what it takes? I mean, what do you personally think, Matt? Cone, Cone is, a, is a wild card in a little bit, so what do you think of him? 
Well, you look at Ian Book. He was able to lead Notre Dame to a pretty solid, well, not solid, an undefeated record up until the Alabama game. So, oh, and then obviously the Clemson loss as well, the ACC championship game. But all in all, I think Book still has some time to grow. Obviously, the quarterback situation was that he was thrown in was not the ideal one, having to take over for Jason Hill and Trevor Simeon after Jameis Winston got injured. So to me, I think that Book has still time to grow. And then Cone, I think, depending on what happens with him, I think he can grow too. But it, you can't just get thrown into a situation where, oh, our second string and third string quarterback are injured. Go in and try to win a, a game on prime time. So it's not going to work like that. you got to give him a better, more comfortable situation. And then obviously playing a red-hot Miami Dolphins team didn't help matters as well. So <laughs> there's my takeaway. Honestly, I really do feel that Cone, I mean, he's 60. He's a big dude. He He has the height. Uh, looking here, he's 221 pounds. I mean, he's a bigger guy. Um, he's definitely not a stick figure type. Um, not the tallest either. But, ah, I mean, being a transfer from Wisconsin, heading to Notre Dame. I mean, overall, Jack Cohn is a... He's solid. I think he can be solid. But when it comes to, like, do I feel that he can be, like... Uh, Matt Ryan or like a like a you know a Philip Rivers or a he he can but but work has to be done of course but do I see him like being this like quarterback that could I mean of course legendary status we none of us know that until it actually happens but do do I feel like he could actually make it honestly the guy played good enough I, I do seriously feel like he can get somewhere and get a chance. What he does with that chance is totally on him, but I feel like he actually can. He has the measurables, which kind of sucks because you have to have measurables, apparently, to play in the NFL, which I can't stand, but it's the truth. Um, he has the measurables. He, he has a strong arm. It's like he doesn't have a strong arm. His accuracy, I mean, at least to me, I haven't seen a whole bunch of him, but he's okay. I mean, he's not ridiculously accurate. You know, accurate. I mean, he has some interceptions on his record. Uh, but who doesn't? Overall, I just kind of feel like he has, he does. I at least I feel Marcus. He does have the things supposed to make it or to 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 get to the NFL to succeed. Ah, that's a tough one. But I do kind of feel like you know, give him a go. Um, personally, I think he can. I just think he's a he's he's a, he's, he's solid enough in my opinion to to get there and to maybe you know succeed for a year or two. Um, depending on where he gets a chance at and who really does and need a quarterback that bad and what kind of system he fits into. A lot of things go into that. But overall, I mean, I think he has it. It's there. But once again, it's totally up to him. He can get in there and flop. We don't know. We can get, get in there and be another Brady. We Nobody knew Brady was going to be Brady until Brady became Brady. I mean, that's all there is to it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> right there. <laughs> <laughs> it's the truth. I mean, <laughs> nobody knew that day when Bledsoe went down that Bledsoe would never be the quarterback again for the Patriots. And this kid who got picked up from Michigan in the sixth freaking round would turn into a absolute monster of the game and um and absolutely just break records and get a ton of rings and be a part of, if not the well, probably the greatest dynasty in all of of all of the NFL. I mean, yeah, no one knew that. So, <laughs> so I don't know, but I do feel like he can get there and and succeed. I do feel he can succeed, but we'll we'll see what he does there. So, okay, Terrence. So we're at the half an hour mark. Really quick, I know there are some more players to take a look at. If you want to, if you want to highlight anybody else, but I do want to read this one because we got to make sure we get a little defense in here. Um, also, once again, courtesy of Bill Smith on this NFL article. Great stuff here. Uh, he says, uh, let's see, Houston stars on D. Yeah, so Jackson State linebacker James Houston was another bright spot for the East as he had a big hit in the run game. Uh, stopping Ty Chandler for a loss. He was also able to put pressure on Iowa State quarterback Brock Purdy. He, uh, he was also, he, he played okay. Um, 
in the fourth quarter. Houston is an intriguing prospect after transferring from Florida. He had 16 and a half sacks last season for head coach Deion Sanders. Darren, this is one of those diamonds in the rough that you really should consider. If it's the third, maybe fourth round, yeah, I'm saying that high for him. And you're like, you know, we don't really need a quarter. We don't need a quarterback. We don't need a running back. We got pretty strong running game. Our offensive line is actually pretty good. Uh, you know, we actually have a pretty good defensive line. You know, if you're a team that has the luxury that was a playoff team this year, it's like, you know, we're pretty good at everything. This is the kind of guy you want to go after because you're like, what do we have to lose? This guy is a freak of nature. The most, the worst is going to happen is he's not that great. But if you add a guy, just put a package together with him, uh, a 34 with him flying off the side, screaming off the edge, or put him in an edge rusher role or something, you know, if you put him in some kind of a, uh, in my opinion, the 34 would be probably really good for this guy because, uh, you know, the edge rusher. But, I mean, hey, 4-3 guy, I mean, I'm just saying. When it comes down to it, <laughs> adding an immense pass rusher, adding somebody who can get to the quarterback, it's never really a bad thing. So, you know, I wouldn't say put him first if you need, like, a tight end or something, <laughs> you know, or if you need your offensive line to get better. But somebody like this guy can really be a big help, uh, especially, I mean, coming from a smaller school, he's so damn hungry. He wants this. So, I don't know, just just, just the thought of mine for this. But what do you think of that, Darren? Do you agree? Yeah, I really thought that, James Houston stood out. And I think when it comes to, like, teams that need, like, good defenses, he could be – or good defensive players. They need to – that would probably be the best guy to go for. And I think he could be a steal in the draft depending on who desperately needs an edge rusher or any sort of linebacker. So I think Houston really definitely stood definitely stood out. I think another diamond in the rough, and not to veer away from this, was mm -hmm. E.J. Perry. Yeah. Keep in mind, he was on Brown. And remember, Brown being a part of the Ivy League, if I'm not mistaken, there was no athletics last season. So for him to show out for the East, it was quite impressive just because, well, he made the most of his opportunity. And remember, no Ivy League football season no ivy league athletics in general last year so i think he was able to make the most of his opportunity this year and make the most of his opportunity in the shrine bowl and he transferred from boston college so obviously the transition from the acc which is completely competitive over to the ivy league and then to the shrine bowl was quite impressive so. Absolutely it was. Way to put a lid on it, Darren. I like that. <laughs> Way to put a lid on it, man. So big ups to Marcus Those Great and Pierre in the chat room. Pierre having a live call on WSR right now, so go check him out. Uh, you've gone to Villanova. So thank you, sir, for popping in. This is back to Philly I go, so thank you, sir. Uh, Taryn, way to put a lid on it, brother. Way, way to make it happen, good sir. That was awesome. So, uh there you go. Some great takeaways there. All right, Taryn, let's focus our attention on over to the Senior Bowl now. And we have some players that are really, really intriguing. Um, let's just address the elephant in the room, man. Malik Willis. <laughs> this guy has really, he's really uh, come out of nowhere, really. I mean, Liberty. They're a good school, Taryn. We've talked about Liberty plenty of times on this show, haven't we? We've talked, we've talked a lot of Liberty. We, you know, they're not this crazy powerhouse. They're definitely a uh, team that's, you know, they're they're solid in their own right. They're not going to go beat Alabama or Clemson or any. Well, maybe Clemson. <laughs> sorry, uh, they're not, they're not going to go beat, um, you know, one of these Power Five conference teams. They're, you know, I mean, maybe on a really good day, but I will say that. This guy has showed so much promise. Um, he looked solid this week in practice. The the experts are all, you know, uh, talking about him. And he seems like he could actually be the real deal, Taryn. I mean, he looks like, he looks like freaking, I don't know, man. Like, he has mobility. He has a strong, this guy can throw the ball. Like, he actually can sling that sucker. He looks good on the run. Um, he just, he looks like, I don't know, Taryn, he looks like he might sneak in uh, somewhere that first round if somebody really needs him, Taryn. I mean, call me crazy. Call, please, call me crazy if you think I'm crazy, but 
I don't know, Taryn. When you see stuff like this, you might want to take a shot if you need him. I mean, if you suck at quarterback, and you're like, none of our guys are good. You might want to take a shot. I don't know, Taryn, but what do you think, man? Malik, Malik Willis, what do you think? I think Malik Willis, of all the quarterbacks in the draft, is the most physical quarterback, and he is definitely physically gifted. I think he gets a little bit of a bad rap or a back seat just because you have Kenny Pickett in that draft. That guy is a major headliner who is definitely going to go first round. And you also have Sam Howell, who coming from UNC, it was a solid, he had a solid season with the Tar Heels. Mm-hmm. And then I, there are plenty of other quarterbacks. I think Matt Coral is going to be in there from Ole Miss. Like, I think Liv, Malik Willis is definitely gifted. And then you also definitely have to watch out for Zappy from, uh, from what Shima call Western Kentucky, yeah. the Hilltoppers. So yeah, you gotta watch out for Zappy as well. And I think for me, my takeaway for Malik Willis, I think he could someone should take a chance on him. He can definitely be a first rounder, if not a second rounder. So I think Willis is gonna have some great upside to him. Darren I'm right there with you, dude. We have some pretty solid quarterbacks. Uh, I also like Kenny Pickett. We, we talked, you know, we talked about him before. This dude's pretty freaking good. Um, he's actually a very solid player. Pitt is a good school anyway. You know, we've seen Fitzgerald come out of Pitt. You know, I'm mean, going to receiver, but I'm just saying, and that was years ago, but I'm just saying Pitt is a school that can produce. They really have. They have a history of it, uh, or at least somewhat in the, in the last decade or so, two decades. Oh, so we talked about, you talked about Sam Howell, another guy, uh, UNC's quarterback there. Pretty solid player as well. I think he can, uh, you know, can definitely play in the NFL. Will he start? I don't know. Will he, you know, will he go high? I, 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 don't, I don't know. <laughs> but I do feel that, you know, once again, a solid quarterback. Um, <laughs> because uh, Mike Bat in the chat room, he says, Washington giving all the quarterbacks a look. <laughs> Yeah, Taryn, this is exactly what we're thinking. You got Big Ben, who just left. He's That's it, man. Pittsburgh doesn't have their guy. I know they have, I know they have their strings, and I'm no diss to them. But what I will say is, is <laughs> sometimes you just want to start over. You know, I mean, look at, like I said, no Brady, he wasn't a start over that just happened unfortunately but you get these young guys who just get to camp and they beat out the starter or whoever the prospective starter may be if somebody retires but you know you got him brady just retired you know (laughs) the saints do the saints really have their guy do they i mean they might but do they you know so i mean this to me i feel like quarterbacks are, are are gonna be uh, in demand in this draft for sure because people are like, ah, oh, I don't know, is this really our guy? Is it not? Damn it, our legend retired after a zillion years. I mean, this is you know, or I mean, you know, well for 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 the Steelers and for the Bucks, well they had their two years with Brady and that's it. But yeah, Darren, um, good question for you, sir. What do you think? Washington is definitely going to be looking at all the quarterbacks. I mean, I, they're going to take one of these guys. I'm just going to go out on a limb and say that right now. I think they're going to take one of these guys. They, they might take two. I don't know. I'm but um, personally, Taryn, what do you think? Out of all these quarterbacks, who do you like the most? And who do you think will end up going somewhere to maybe be that guy that one of these franchises put their trust in to start him maybe as, as, a, as a rookie? Maybe. What do you think? I think for me, I like Bailey Zappi yeah. just because he did set the FBS record for most passing yards. And then you also, and then I also definitely like Kenny Pickett. I think Pickett is probably going to be the first quarterback taken, if not Matt Coral. Like, you also have to look at Matt Coral's injury and for that he suffered against Baylor, which was definitely unfortunate. For Washington's case, I definitely agree that. They're going to be looking at all of the quarterbacks in the draft just because, well, do they really want to bank on Taylor Heineke? And we don't know how many years Ryan Fitzpatrick has left under his belt, especially after a season-ending injury he suffered in week one. So for me, I think that Washington definitely do it, that we'll need to keep an eye on these QBs. And like I said, Kenny Pickett is probably the best of the bunch, but 
definitely do keep an eye on Bailey Zappi. I think he gets overshadowed just because he's not really in a Power 5 conference. And Malik Willis, like I said, he is physically gifted. I think he could be quite effective. And you can't forget about Sam Howell as well. Agreed, Darren. Um, I, I, yeah, and you see you had to throw Howell back in there. If I could give you my favorite, I, I'm definitely Zap, – Zappi is, is the guy. I'm going to put him second for me. I like this guy, Malik, man. I want to see what he does. I just like him because he can move. And in today's game, you know, we see guys that can move. Since Michael Vick and Donovan McNabb, you know, I mean, okay, yes, were there players before him? Yeah, Fran Tarkenton, go back that long. I mean, yeah, there's been quarterbacks to run out of the pocket. It's definitely been a thing. But to, like, do it a lot, <laughs> like over and over and over and make it a part of the game plan. We're seeing this now. Mahomes, mobile. Um, do we really have to go any further than Lamar Jackson? You know, like, guys that can move, that can get out of the pocket and move. They turn to a running back themselves. So, I, I don't know. I feel like, and I'm not saying that he can't do that. I'm just saying. But, I don't know. Malik, feel, I feel like he can be that kind of guy that just maybe gives some of an egg. So, just my thoughts. But, yeah, good stuff there on the quarterbacks. And really, uh, man, it has been great. Practice has been fun all week. These guys are really excited to be out there. And, uh, yeah, it has really been a great week of practice and, and definitely excited for for these guys to get out here and ball today. Uh, but, yeah, Taryn, I want to know, anybody else, who, who were your biggest standouts? We do have a few articles here. Um, that uh, I want to take out P, uh, pff.com. <clears throat> I'm sorry, m- uh, written by Matt Ran- uh, Renner, or I'm sorry, Michael Renner of pff.com. Uh, he pointed out a couple of players here, Taryn. Edge rusher Jermaine Johnson. Hey, Mike, here's your guy, Florida State. Um, yeah, he, you know, of course, throwing him out there. Absolute beast. Defensive tackle, Travis Jones out of UConn. Yes, another big player. There is a video, Taryn. There is a video of him with a one-on-one. Homeboy does a mean rip. I'm talking about a mean rip. Like, Taryn, he rips and, like, throws the freaking offensive lineman. Like, he throws him. Like, he just throws him with his right arm. Like, he throws him, Darren. Like, I, can I say it one more time? He throws him. He throws him out of the way and then just gets around his body. When you can move a man like that with your one arm, yeah, you're pretty good, <laughs> you know? Also, Jermaine Johnson, uh, he was in a pass rush. And you see him throw this spin move that was incredible in one-on-ones, man. Incredible spin move. Sinks his hips and just quick, just gets around the tackle on the inside. I mean, this awesome stuff there. Uh, certainly a player, uh, two offensive, I'm oh, sorry, two, two defensive weapons there that look great on the defensive line. Um, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at a few more, Taryn. Uh, linebacker Brian Osmoa out of, out of Oklahoma. He's also been a solid player, very solid athlete. We've seen, of course, Willis is somebody to take a look at. Devontae Wyatt out of Georgia, another big monster. Uh, seeing this guy also on one-on-ones, man. Pass rush. I mean, it gets a quick little move, man. Quick little, um, take one more look at this. What was this here? A uh, boom, just a quick little rip. Rip underneath, and the guy is, is he's just gone. Um, so just overall, man, some great studs there. I won't take away uh, more from you, Terry. My belt, my apologies. But you know I'm a defensive guy, Terry. And you know I'm loving the defensive line. I'm a defensive line guy all day long. I love quick feet. I love dominance. I guess I love having a guy that can move an entire body with one arm and then ripping it under. I'm just saying, Jared. So how about you, brother? <laughs> how about some more standouts from you? I think for me, I wouldn't call this guy a true standout, but I think Desmond Ritter kind of stood out as well. Yeah. And for me, I think uh, he made Jermaine Ford look really good. And even though he's a running back, he was able to catch some check downs, which was quite nice. Um, for the offensive line, I got to give love to Abraham Lucas of Washington State. He yeah. showed some flashes in 
the Senior Bowl as well. And I think for me, I don't think he gives the, gets enough credit just because everyone is focused on the Northwestern offensive line. And we obviously saw what Rayshon Slater did. So I think, and then another wide receiver standout was Christian Watson from North Dakota State. A guy I give love to the SDS as well, just because I think everyone was focusing on the Georgias and maybe the Alabamas mm-hmm. and all the top names. But I think Christian Watson can make a good name for himself as well, considering he stood out in the FCS powerhouse that was North Dakota State. And then going back to what you were talking about with Devontae Wyatt, he can be a definite monster, considering Georgia has such a stout defense. And everyone's talking about Wyatt Davis, but I think Devontae Wyatt can definitely make an impact for any team that drafts him. So I think for those Georgia defensive linemen, I think that's where they'll shine, especially for teams that need a stout defense or they need to improve their defense. Absolutely, Terry. I love how you brought up Christian Watson out of North Dakota State. <clears throat> of course, we're all pleading <laughs> that the Bison just join the freaking Big Sky. I mean, ser- I'm sorry, I'm the Big Sky. Oops, <laughs> that's FCS. Um, that <laughs> they're already there. <laughs> that North Dakota State, I don't know, joins the freaking Big Twelve or something. I mean, seriously, they can hang with them. I know they can. <laughs> Nebraska hasn't been that good for a while. Um, yeah. Uh, so honestly, you guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to diss them. <laughs> Terry, maybe if they wore those those uniforms, they look like overalls. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Did you read the Nebraska one? <laughs> Sorry. Those were the best. Best uniforms ever. <laughs> those those were the best. I'm telling you. <laughs> when you tagged me in that that day, I had a field day, man. I, I think I laughed for like 10 minutes straight. <laughs> that one, we got to have those for one game. Just one. Anyway. Um, oh, my gosh. A guy like Christian Watson... Animal, I I I just, I just want to see him succeed. I want to see him make it happen. He is very very solid. Um, we've seen him play. You know, we've seen him do extremely well this year. Another national championship. He looked great in one on one. The guy is a solid athlete. And then you brought up Abraham Lucas out of Washington State. I want to bring this up real quick. He had one. <clears throat> what do you call it? A uh, a one-on-one here where he gets the defensive end and like just he just steadies his feet <clears throat> and that is exactly what you want to do you're a big boy okay you got a speedy dude on the outside it was also pretty damn strong but you know you're probably stronger offensive linemen are usually stronger i mean sometimes not always not always trust me but the the majority of the time you're gonna have the offensive linemen who are a tad bit stronger than defensive linemen and defensive linemen who are a tad bit faster. Um, and it does equal out. I mean, and that's not always the case. I've seen very fast offensive linemen who are huge. And I've seen very strong defensive linemen who are actually not that big. Uh, so I've seen it, trust me. Um, but, Darren, <laughs> seeing this guy, I guess he, he, he keeps his feet moving. This is what you want. You want your big boys to keep their feet moving and stay in front of him. Stay in front of him. Give your quarterback three seconds. He will make something happen. If you have a quarterback like Patrick Mahomes, um, maybe not on that last game they played, my goodness, Chiefs. Anyway, uh, we won't go there. But if you have a quarterback who's pretty mobile and has a pretty good arm, you're really only going to need to keep in front of your guy for like three seconds. If you can do that... You're okay. You know, so a guy like Abraham Lucas looks really good. We've seen him this year. Washington State played pretty solid. I mean, actually, they were all right. Definitely not a great team, but they, you know, he showed promise. And he looks at here in the Senior Bowl. And, yeah, I mean, I really do feel that there's a lot of standouts in these games who are just, man, um, looking, looking solid. One more guy who I wanted to mention, uh, and I know earlier you mentioned Wyatt, absolutely. Uh, how about Jerome Ford, Taryn? Um, he is, you know, Cincinnati this year had a memorable season. A guy that re- 
really, really, really shine on a team that just made things happen when everyone doubted them. Honestly, dude, it's unfair to, to talk about these players without bringing up Ford at least once. He's solid. He's actually a very good running back. Do you feel that he's going to end up going early um, ish? Early ish. I don't know if he's going to be a first rounder, but do you think he's going to end up going uh, higher sooner than later? And even if he does go sooner or later, I mean, Darren, where do you think a guy of his versatile nature, where do you think he could really end up and shine? <laughs> Chargers? What? <laughs> <laughs> Perhaps. I mean, I feel. It all, it all just boils down to what team is desperate for which position. Like, but now that you mentioned the Chargers, I saw that they were desperate for an interior lineman or inside defensive lineman just because their run defense was complete putrid. And I've been saying that the Chargers need to draft Wyatt Davis in the first round. But I'm getting all sorts of other things, like they also need to draft a cornerback, which kind of makes sense just because – I already said this on my show, SoCal Supreme Sports Show, but Chris Harris Jr. is not cutting it. <laughs> yeah. So, and then obviously Asante Samuel Jr. and Mike Davis, Michael Davis aren't, are can't do it all by themselves. So, it, I see a lot of like different needs for like different teams. Like some teams need wide receivers, even though they've got good wide receivers. They need a running back and all sorts of things. So, my big question is. Will the will the NFL teams follow suit of what the Bengals did by drafting a kicker? I mean, it actually worked for the Bengals as they drafted Evan McPherson. So I think depending on who's the most accurate kicker in the combine or the senior bowl will also depend on which kicker gets drafted. Because obviously kicking and special teams are just as important as the other two or the other two positions, yeah. Absolutely, Darren. <clears throat> Absolutely. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy to start looking at your own team now, right? Because we see all these moving pieces. We see all these players who are absolutely incredible. They are just showing up and showing out, doing amazing things. <laughs> and then you're like, wait a minute, what do we need? And you start to really think, like, oh, man. And this is where it starts where the rubber hits the road for us. Is like, okay, we could talk about all these players. But then you're like, oh, crap, it'd be really nice to have this guy or this guy. And it's really, really neat. So, overall, yeah, man, I, I'm totally with you. Um, man, pff, the Raiders need every bit of offensive line we can get. This guy, Lucas, man, yeah, he'd be really nice there, uh, Colton Miller. Yeah, sorry. But no, he, he's solid. But yeah, it'd be nice. We need offensive linemen, okay? I mean, there's guy, there's a guy named, uh, what's his name, Tillery, Taryn? Jerry? Yeah, Jerry Tillery. Yeah. yeah. Jerry Tillery from Notre Dame. Yeah, there's a guy named Jerry Tillery that, remember, everyone was, that was so crazy. A couple years ago, everyone was so concerned about him saying that his quote-unquote football wasn't his main concern. Um, Yeah, he's got other things going on in his life. This is his job. I mean, it is it is his main concern, but it seems that time, I don't know, that was crazy. But anyway, really, really great player. But yeah, Jerry Tillery. There's a guy named Jerry Tillery that, you know, kind of likes hitting Derek Carr. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, we need, we need uh, some big boys to help out, to slow him down and everybody else. So, yeah, it's incredible to think of all these great athletes and where they could be going. And then you think about, you know, if they can be going to your team. So, overall, Taryn, we have so many great players to get to uh man it is just it's impossible to name them all it really is i hate knowing that we're leaving so many players out there but overall man this has really been a amazing season and today you know <clears throat> all the best to every one of these young men uh, I just really quick, Taryn. <clears throat> any word on Hunter Lipke from uh, from uh, let me see here, uh, North Dakota State? Did he stay or did he come out somewhere? Because I don't remember seeing him anywhere. Uh, who did you say again? Sorry, sorry. Remember who? Hun who Hunter, I'm looking over Hunter Lipke uh, from North oh Hunter Lipke. Yeah, did he? Is he going? Did he end up going anywhere? Did he? Uh, 
Or is he, is he staying for a senior year? I don't know if he ended up going. I don't think he ended up coming out, actually. Yeah, I'm actually not sure about that. I mean, I he, I feel he might be able to. I mean, he is a junior. He does want, and he has one more year of eligibility, but I have not heard of anything about that. So I think it'd be a great addition for any team. Like, he's he's a fullback, and he could line up well as a linebacker or a running back. So I think we'll have to keep an eye on that during the off season. But if he does decide to commit to the NFL draft, I think it'll be great stuff to see as well. Um, not to veer away from that, but I did see the wide receiver versus defensive back battle, as well as the offensive line versus defensive line battle as well. And I was t- impressed with how the defensive linemen were able to penetrate from the offensive linemen. Obviously there was some, offensive linemen that stood out and I think for me some of the offensive linemen just were able to hold their own and but most of them kind of weren't and I think this draft could be heavily filled with defensive back yeah and there were some wide receivers that stood out in terms of the wide receiver defensive back matchup I believe there was even at the, the uh, same last name battle as Christian Watson faced up against I think it was Jalen Watson. Yeah, Christian yeah. Watson took on Jalen Watson. So <laughs> that was kind of amusing to see. But the I never even knew that was a thing. Obviously, it's a part of the like the Shrine Bowl, the Senior Bowl, the Combine. But those players that face one another are quite impressive. And I think that definitely needs to be highlighted. And, yeah. I'm right there with you, Darren. <clears throat> a couple years ago, we saw <clears throat> two guys. Dalton Risner uh, from Kansas State, and I forgot about the other one. How did I forget his name? Oh, my gosh. But they were on the same side in Senior Bowl, and they dominated the entire right side. Like, it was incredible seeing them dominate. And, yeah, I just felt like this is where you can see it. You know, we've seen it, and then you see both these guys. One went to the Falcons. Now I want to go find his freaking name. Gosh darn it, we're getting close to time here, but... Um, yeah, man, we watched it. I just want to, you know, honestly, um, we see this happen. We see this happen where, uh, you know, we see players who don't even look that, I mean, they look, they're okay, you know, they're cool, but then we see these athletes get out there, man, and Chris, Chris Lindstrom, <clears throat> that's right, Chris Lindstrom, he's the starting right guard right now out of Boston College. That's right, starting right guard for uh, the Atlanta Falcons. And Dalton Risner is a guy, I think he's on the Broncos, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, out of Kansas State, he is on the freaking Broncos. I think he's their starter, if I'm not mistaken. Taryn, we saw these, and remember, you and I, we even talked about this. We saw them dominating the right side of the line like later in the game. And, dude, look at these guys now, man. I mean, they're both in the NFL. They're both. I, I just want to take a look here real quick. Let's look at the depth chart just to see. Yeah, Dalton Risner, starting left guard. Unfortunately, he was on IR this year, so get well soon, brother. But, yeah, you got. You can see, man. You can see. These guys, I didn't even know what they were coming in. We didn't even know. But then we see them playing. like, oh, my gosh, these guys are amazing. And now they both, they both got drafted. And now they're both starting. And it's like. Dude, they're freaking great. So it's like, this is such an important game. It's a fun one. And there you go. So, Taryn, man, brother, it has been fun. But we are shifting gears to three and out now, y'all. Y'all know the time. Cue the music, because we're out of here. Taryn, where can they find you, brother? And how about this season? You can find me on Twitter, at Taryn Rodriguez one That's where I post my main content. I will be busy for quite a while all the way up until July where we will have our next college edition and I'm looking forward to season what two or three 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 of college edition yeah three of college edition and yeah it's gonna be fun I'm I'm excited for it you and me both Aaron well that is gonna do it for the next stop three and out for us in the combine the combine gets underway by the way you guys on March First, it's on a Tuesday, measurable and everything, but we won't see the film until the uh, Thursday the 3rd. 
Tight ends, quarterbacks, and wide receivers on Friday the 4th. Offensive linemen and running backs on Saturday the 5th. Defensive line and linebackers. <clears throat> and on Sunday the 6th, DBs, play kickers, and special teams. With that said, you guys, we will see you right around the combine for 3 and out, though. As for this show, 3 and out Call edition, we've seen some great things this year. We will see you coming up in August. With that said... For Terry Rodriguez, for me, your boy Larry B, it has been a great season. The Senior Bowl is just 30 minutes away. Enjoy it, because you're going to hear a lot of these names on 3 and Out in about a month's time when we get to talking about these guys' the performances, of course, and get ready for the combat. This has been Aaron and Larry here on 3 and Out Calls Mission. We will see you next season right here on IE Sports Radio. Or direct you for all that is sports. Until then, take care, and as always, God bless.